Now while we're waiting for this, again we're doing this kind of real time, so I have lots of time to talk and gab about, uh, about stuff. And so you guys have had problems with your airlocks blowing up with some of, the, some of the wort coming up through the airlock as it's fermenting. That's completely normal. I'll tell you what you do. Get yourself a length of hose, okay, and a bung, like a, a bung with a hole in it, a rubber, a rubber bung with a hole in it. Stick the hose in there. And what you do is you put this in the, the lid of your fermenter. You will have to have watched some of my other videos in order to understand what I'm talking about fermenter and some of the equipment. But you put this in the hole in your fermenter and you put the other end of the tube into a bottle of, of water, basically. And it acts as an airlock because the carbon dioxide can come out and it'll bubble through the water, but no air can get in. In the meantime, if you end up with a blowout, like some of you have, and I have lots of them, instead of having to take the airlock off and clean it and put it back on and do that every few hours for about three days in a row, just use one of these, and that way the blowout will come through the tube, okay? It'll come through the tube and go into the glass of water and it won't, you know, it won't hurt anything. Once it stops blowing out, then you can pop this off, put on your, your airlock, and then leave that for the duration of the brewing. Or you can just leave this on. It's a perfectly good airlock. Nothing wrong with that. Put this on your fermenter, put this in a bottle of water, make sure it's down at the bottom, and it's a perfectly fine way to use it to make an airlock. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, I get asked, is uh, sediment at the bottom of the bottle and what to do about that, um, you know, how to deal with it, and I guess just the whole idea of pouring the beer. If you're fermenting your beer, if you're carbonating, carbonating your beer in the bottle, like if you're priming the bottle with, you know, a teaspoon or whatever of sugar and, uh, and then adding the beer and capping it, you're basically carbonating your beer in the bottle. That means there's a little bit of fermentation happening in the bottle, which means you're going to end up with a little bit of sediment at the bottom of the bottle, just like you did at the bottom of your fermenter. All right. So you got a nice carbonated beer. Plastic bottles will not explode like glass ones tend to. So if you end up with a little extra fermentation in here for any reason, you're not going to have glass all over the place. I've had that happen. It's not fun because it expands and stretches and it won't explode. Um, to pour your beer, you have to avoid the sediment and don't don't wash your beer don't ever wash your beer glasses in dish soap don't ever because when you do that there's a film on the inside of the glass when you pour your beer it's got no head on it whatsoever no head on it whatsoever so don't use any detergents or anything like that just rinse your glasses out with hot water put them upside down no dish soap. Dishwashers are okay because um, the detergent's different. But no, don't use uh, you know, don't use your standard bad for it. Ever, don't ever do that. Just rinse them. Now, pouring it. This is a beer that's actually not quite. It's it's only been in the bottle for about five days, so it's not quite ready yet. But it's all I had. Okay. Just tilt your glass. And just, you have to just pour it. Maybe you might want to make a little bit of a fuss at the bottom just to get some head. And uh, just watch. Most of the sediment will stick to the bottom of the glass. Some of it will creep out. And just don't, and just wait until it reaches the mouth of the bottle. The sediment, you'll end up with a little bit of beer at the bottom of the bottle. Some people drink it. Some people just pour it in sort of and just drink it right out of the bottle. But if you want a nice clear, beer like that, I hope you can see that, then you're going to want to, uh, it's steaming up because it's over the, but you're going to want to, you know, pour it and avoid the sediment. Get yourself a hydrometer. Learn how to use a hydrometer because if you have a batch that's stopped fermenting in the middle somewhere, it's, it's fermented really fast, like in three days, you're kind of like, you know, what the heck? What am I supposed to do here? Um, you, you don't know what's going on. And you really need to uh, be able to check to see whether your your fermentation is finished. Because it might be finished. Or it might have stopped halfway through. 
And if it has, you might have a bad batch of yeast. You might want to put another package of yeast in there. Let's talk about yeast for a minute. Now, I just use the yeast that comes with the kit, which, which you know, is fine. I think Cooper's makes a good quality yeast. I've never had a problem with it. <clears throat> there are those who will tell you that you can get much better quality yeasts. Um, you can order them online or you buy them, and they come in a, like a bag, and it's already liquid in there. You know, it's already been hydrated. And uh, I'm not opposed to trying that. You're just, this is something you're going to have to experiment with on your own. If you want to try using different yeasts or you want to order a specialty yeast from somewhere and pour it on your brew, it, it may make a difference. I don't know. I've never tried it. I've only ever used this stuff, and it's just what comes with the kit. I've got this warm enough now. Actually, it's hot. This isn't like an official produced beer making video, it's just, just me doing it. Talking to you about a few things I've thought about. Okay, so I guess the first thing I'm going to do is add my one kilogram of sugar. Now this is a sanitized stir stick, because I just put it in boiling water. Okay, it's clean. That's important. Make sure it doesn't have stuff all over it. Add our sugar. Now remember, these are the instructions that came with the kit. This is the exact amount of sugar that the kit makers say to put in. Well, I'm not putting any extra in now. Now we're going to open our can and uh, Actually, tonight I'm actually making a different type of beer than I would normally make a draft, and I don't change it usually because I just like I like what I what I make. But today I did a real ale, so it's the first time in a number of years that I've actually changed my uh, style. So I'm, I'm a little excited about tasting the difference between this and what I normally make. Stir it around when you pour it in, so it doesn't burn. Okay. You can see this. Okay. At this point, I'm just going to stop the pour for a second, turn the heat down. I don't want to burn this. It's already boiled, so we're fine. You don't have to boil your wort. Wort, wort, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, this is this is a much darker. Uh, beer than I, what I normally make, so I'm actually really excited to drink this. Mmm, it's got a nice smell. Uh, what I'm going to do is just rinse the can out with some hot water. You want to get all the uh, malt extract out of here. You don't want to leave any. Give that a good stir. I got the heat on medium just to keep it up to temp so that it's still nice and hot and everything gets sanitized or sterilized. There we are. Now, that's all mixed together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, like a lid on it. This is a clean pot lid. I'm just going to put it on. I don't have a lid for this pot, so I'm just going to put that on. Turn the heat off, and I'm going to leave it sit for a minute. I'm going to go downstairs and sanitize my uh, equipment, my bucket, spoons, and all that stuff. And then I'll come up and get this and take it down, and I'll finish this off. Okay?